Hey guys, it's Dakota Wixom here from allthingsmotion.net. Uh, sorry I haven't posted anything new recently. I've been real sick and it's kind of hard to do uh, tutorials when you're coughing your brains out. So here we go. Um, today we're going to learn about animating shape layers in After Effects. Kind of uh, continuing off of our previous tutorial, um, creating animations with no or very few keyframes. Uh, which I think is really cool. Um, here's an example of what we'll be making today. effects here. Here is composition that that uh, movie was created from. Rendering real slow here. I've got a lot of color correction on here. So, all right. So we'll break this down. Here you can see I've got a grunge layer over the whole thing, which I always do. I like grunge. Um, all right. Here, one, two, three, four different shape layers. Let me. I'll change the colors just so you guys can see them a little bit better. All right, so I'm going to turn off these other guys. This first shape layer, let me solo that. This first shape layer is completely randomly generated. There is absolutely no keyframing going on. And so I used a lot of wiggle expressions, just like we did in the uh, uh, fractal animation tutorial. Change a lot of different properties, and then if I do toggle modes here, you can see we just uh, overlaid a bunch of iterations of different shapes on top of each other. And when you do that, you get this. And all the shapes are interacting and kind of changing uh, changing how the other shapes look as well. Alrighty. So here we go. I'm going to close that composition. Alright, I'm going to go to Composition, New Composition. You can also do Command N or I guess it's Control N if you're on a PC. And just a side note, I am using uh, Adobe After Effects CS6. Um, this tutorial should work just fine on uh, most versions most versions of After Effects. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna let's do 720 at 2997 frames per second. So check this 1280 by 720. That's good. Shouldn't be longer than uh, 60 seconds. So I'm just gonna go ahead and call this Master Tut just so I don't get confused. Alrighty, here we go. So first things first, I'm going to create a layer, new, solid, or command Y. I'm going to call this BG for background. Press OK. Should be comp size. If it's not, then you can go ahead. Here, I'm going to layer, solid settings. You can just click this button, make comp size, and it should, well, make it the size of the composition. Uh, alrighty. So I'm going to go to, click on the layer, down here, go to Effect, Generate, Ramp. And this is really useful to create kind of just a, I don't know, a less plain uh, background. Whoops. So I'm going to grab this little uh, center position here. Ramp. Alrighty. 
I'm going to change the end position of the ramp. You just click on this little target gun and just click on the end of the composition. And I wish that they switched these colors around. This should be white and that should be black by default. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and change the start color to white, the end color of the ramp to well, maybe a 75% gray. Yeah, that looks good. Alrighty. So, and when I was trying to figure out this uh, on my own, I was trying to create a bunch of solids and apply uh, shape layers or apply uh, shapes to the solid and it didn't work and what I found is that you need to use shape layers to create shapes so kind of a blonde moment I guess but I'm not blonde so I don't know what it is alright I'm gonna go to effects and presets make sure you create your shape layer scroll down to animation presets all right, and shapes, and I think we're going to use sprites still. Yeah, sprites still. So you can also, if you can't find it, just type in sprites oh. shape. Oh, I guess you have to go into animation presets and find it. So it's under shapes. Yeah, sprites still. That's weird. It should sprite still. It should be finding it. That's strange. Hmm. Well, if anybody figures out why it's not finding it, go ahead and post a comment below. That might be good to know. I've never had a problem with that before. Alrighty, so click on your shape layer. And really, you can choose anything. I like to choose shapes with a lot of points so we'll do mandala mandala i don't know what it is mandala all right gonna go ahead and solo that layer by clicking this button here so now we can see just our shape layer i'm gonna go ahead and drill down this uh shape layer drill down contents go into group and here is all our properties we can go into polystar and you can see as we change the points it changes the the shape quite a bit so we're definitely going to animate that um, of course you can animate the position the rotation there's uh, just all sorts of different properties it's really powerful uh, what you can do I'm surprised I haven't seen more people um, messing with these yeah I mean look at that creating something completely different so all right, we're going to go ahead and alt-click on the points here. And I guess before we do that, we'll just figure out how many points we should really go to. I mean, we don't want to all of a sudden be rendering 630 points. You know, it doesn't really make much sense. So we'll see that it goes, and it looks good, down to probably like three points and all the way up to... Maybe about 50 is where we're going to stop. So, yeah, so alt click on this stopwatch here if you haven't already. And we're going to type in here wiggle. Again, this is the same property we've been using uh, for the previous tutorial. We're going to do 0.5, and that's the amount per second. And then our variable, which is going to be 30, or 20. <laughs> 30 points. So this means, and make sure you do the end parentheses, this means it's going to wiggle this value, randomly change this value by a value of 30 0.5 times per second. And of course you can change those values, put in whatever you want. Just go ahead, go ahead and click off there and should, if you play, have a shape that is mutating. <laughs> Creating a whole bunch of new shapes there. I like it. I might actually make it a little bit faster, so do point 0.3. There we go. And this also looks a lot better when you put on motion blur too, which is cool. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and scale this up again, so a little bit. So I just clicked on the layer, press S, scale it up just a tad. <coughs> Alright, go back into the 
contents group polystar. All right, and our rotation, I think we're going to just have this rotating the whole time. So at about, it's kind of hard to estimate here, so I'm going to alt click on this guy on the stopwatch, type in wiggle. I'm going to do 0.5 and I don't know, 30 degrees. So 30, oh no, sorry. This should be time times 30. So that should be for every second, I think, it should rotate by 30 degrees and just keep rotating by more and more and more. So you can see it is rotating here. It's kind of hard to tell because the points are also changing at the same time, but I like the effect that it gives. I might even make it a little bit faster so you can just change the amount, so 50 maybe. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Okay, so now we can also animate. Uh, let's do the inner radius, yeah. So it looks good down from zero. Let's go all the way up to, I don't know, 300. Let's go ahead and put this value at zero. Alt click on the stopwatch. Type in wiggle. We'll do 0.3 comma 300. All right, so now we've got a shape that is changing even more. Yep. Okay. Go ahead and alt click on outer radius here. To wiggle. I'm gonna do the same thing about 0.3 comma 300, I guess. End parentheses. All right, yep, changing a lot. And it's good, it, it kind of disappears at one point, which means when we have a bunch of different shapes on here, um, I mean, just the other shapes are gonna be showing up, so it can change the look of the whole composition by quite a bit. Sorry, that's the dog. All righty, so that looks pretty good. Now I guess we'll just change, uh, I don't like the stroke here, I don't know, maybe you guys do, I don't. So I'm gonna go into, make sure you Fill this up so it's easier to see. Click on stroke and um, I guess we'll just lower the opacity of the stroke. It's that easy. Um, or if you want, if you want it to look solid, you can raise the opacity and then just pick the same color. And there you go. But I don't know, maybe you guys like it. I just think it looks a little bit more clean when it's when it doesn't have this kind of outline going the whole time. So, all right, that's good. I mean, you can change all sorts of properties here. If you go into the Poly Star, uh, you can change the you know change it to a polygon and um, all sorts of stuff. So, and with also keep in mind that every shape has different properties. Um, sometimes you'll have multiple, like you'll have a Poly Star and ellipse and all that. So you can animate all those at once underneath a single shape layer. So uh, one thing you can also do is animate the scale. Uh, I think I'm just gonna leave it for now because it does kind of scale up by itself. Um, yeah, I and mean, it fills, definitely fills the composition at some point, so. Alrighty, so we're going to unsolo this. There you can see it's on our white background, looks nice. Do layer, new, shape layer again. Going to solo this shape layer. And I mean, you can just pick any new shape that you want. Uh, might be easier if you pick the same one I do, just so you can follow along a little bit better. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do fan blades here. Scroll down to the contents, into the group, just like before. And now you can see, just like I said, there's a polystar and an ellipse. You've got a merge path. They also have a stroke going on, which you can turn on, turn off. I guess we could have done that on our last one. They also have a fill, so you can change the fill color. You can also do that by applying a effect generate fill, um, which does the same thing. I'll show you effect generate. Oops, that was the wrong one. Effect generate.
fill. Yeah, see now it's all red. And you can change the color. But uh, let's not do that yet. So go into uh, Polystar. Uh, keep it at star. I think we're going to animate the points just a little bit. So wiggle, comma, or uh, 0.5, comma, 50. End parentheses. We're going to do change the rotation, time, times 50. I mean, you guys can use whatever values you want. Uh, let's see. Wiggle 0.3 comma 300. Go ahead and copy that. Command A, Command C. Alt click on this guy. Command V. Right. Yeah, so that guy's changing a lot too. Which is cool. Definitely a different look than our other shape gives us. So you can see they're overlapping here, and you've got now it's a completely different effect. Um, disregard my temperature warnings here. Let me do. By the way, if you're running a MacBook Pro Retina, one of the new ones, for some reason mine has a real problem overheating. Um, I mean, it doesn't overheat; it just gets really hot. So there's this real good uh, program called SMC Fan Control. And change it to higher RPMs and yeah, it works real nicely, it cools down the machine pretty quickly. Anyways, uh, I digress. All right, back to ellipse here. So, this, um, as you can see, kind of just creates this hole in the middle, and that's because of the I mean, this is your ellipse, and then this is your other polystar shape. Um, then we've got this mode um, here, this merge path, and it's subtracting the ellipse from. Uh, uh, the polystar, so you can change it to intersect, so it'll only render where those two intersect. Change it to exclude intersections, which I guess does the same thing, just because the shapes are overlapping completely. You know, add, so they both render. But I think we're going to leave it on subtract here. Um, I mean, you can change this guy. I wouldn't change it too much. You can see, if you go too big, it's it's going to completely wipe out the shapes. So. I don't know, we'll maybe go up to about 600 as our maximum value. So I'm going to alt click on this guy, wiggle 0.3 comma 6, 600. Just scroll through here. Good. I actually can't even see the shape. It might be just taking uh, one of the x values, so I guess I'm not going to animate that anyways. I, I I know I did at one point. There's a way to set it so it animates both the x and y values. Maybe it's just not. Hmm. All right. Well, I guess we'll just move on. Uh, you guys can mess with that. So we're going to go ahead and change our fill to a. Uh, let's do. Let's do a nice, kinda, maybe a blue. There we go. Alrighty, so unsolo this guy. Now you see we've got that shape on top of this guy. They're both changing, and you can see now this this shape on top is completely blocking out the one on the bottom. So what you can do to just create a little bit more interaction is change the mode and make sure um, and you can click this button, so all of a sudden you've got um, all these tools now, you know, motion blur and 3D adjustment layer. Click on the switch, and now you've got the mode and track mat and parent. It took me a while to figure that out when I was first starting After Effects. So uh, go into the mode here, click on this guy. You can choose whatever you want. I like the color burn. Um, there's also, I mean, you can do overlay. We'll do color burn. So as this orange guy intersects with the blue one, it creates a new color, which is red. Um, and you can see they both disappear almost completely at that point. But that's okay. We're going to add more shapes in here. So, All right. So layer, new, shape layer. I wonder why they're both disappearing at the same time. That's kind of odd. 
All right, uh, shape layer. I'm gonna go into, uh, let's see, ray star. No, command Z there. Tricog. I guess we'll do a gear. Yeah. All right. Uh, can either solo that or just turn that layer on only. Go to the contents again. Group. Polystar. I mean, same thing. Um, very simple. Alt click that. Wiggle. 0.3 comma. Let's go 60. Go ahead and copy that. Uh, you can go into the rotation. Alt click this. Time times 60 radius let's go up to maybe 350 so this is zero alt click paste our wiggle expression you can change uh, that last value to 350 uh, then you've got the outer radius which you can also change but I like that without it get a little bit more uh, sharp edges than the other guy. So we're definitely going to scale this guy up though. Yeah. Alright, and go back into the contents, group, stroke. I think we're going to... Wow, this whole thing is... Alright, I guess we're going to just lower the stroke width a bit. Maybe we'll just actually make the stroke the same color. That's probably the easiest. Cool, that looks good. Maybe a little bit too big at time, so we can uh, click on the shape layer, press S, Alt click on the scale. It uh, looks like you need to set uh, the wiggle value equal to W, and then say that, uh, I have this zero here, and then say that uh, your this is your X value and your Y value, and they're both set them both equal to W. Um, not 100 percent sure what the zero is here for. Maybe some coder out there is going to be able to tell me. And then make sure you have a semicolon at the end. So I'm just going to leave this up for a couple of seconds here so you guys can get the right expression in if you want to. All right. So there we go. And now it is definitely animating. So um, I'm also going to change, I guess, the value. So I'm going to go in, say, 350. Point three. Yeah. Good, good. All right. So now we're going to unsolo this guy. Change the mode again. Do classic color burn. Now we're creating a nice purple. It's cool. It's cool. Good. I mean, you can change the layer of these, or the order of these layers too, and it creates different effects. I mean, put this guy on top and change the layer to color burn. Uh, make sure that your bottom layer is uh, normal, or I mean, I guess you could set it to color burn, but the problem is then it's going to uh, have this gradient in it as well. So I normally like to set the bottom layer to normal, just so it's a hard 100% opa opacity shape which the other shapes can layer over. Yeah, that looks real cool. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys can just add as many shapes as you want, create new stuff. Uh, maybe there's other things you can think about that I didn't think about. I mean, bullseye head would be pretty cool. Could go into this guy and I change the number of rings and how, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can animate this guy and maybe have other shapes. Uh, uh, so, like, for example, you could have this shape, set a track mat, the alpha mat, inverted mat, of the other guy. So now you've got this ring shape in the middle, which is cool. And, I mean, if you're changing the scale of the ring shape, uh, you could get some real cool effect. I guess we'll do that now. So what I did was created the ring shape um, and changed the track mat of the bottom layer to alpha inverted mat. 
map, which means that it's going to take the alpha, in other words, the opacity of the other layer, invert it. So where the layer is uh, completely see-through, this guy is going, this layer is going to be 100% uh, solid, and where it's uh, not see-through, uh, in the reverse. So uh, if we're changing the scale of this guy, it's going to be changing the shape underneath as well. Real cool effect. Alright, gonna just steal that scale expression from our last guy. Where's our scale here? Maybe it wasn't this one. And I'm just clicking on the layer, pressing U to check the keyframes. Oh, yep, there it is. Okay, so copy that guy. Yeah, if you press U, it brings up all the keyframes and all the expressions, um, and only those values which are keyframed or uh, have an expression on. So I'll click on the scale here and just gonna copy that in. Um, yeah, so now we have a shape that is changing by quite a bit, changing the shape underneath. I actually really like that. I'm glad I did that. That's cool. Cool, cool. Might even change uh, this to a much larger value, maybe like 750, changing a lot. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. I mean, you can have this guy render too, but I like it uh, without, just so it kind of looks like that shape is being just cut off, you know? And so that that's a real good way to explain it. Um, you can see exactly where the alpha, where the white, uh, I mean, where it's solid here, you can see if I click this layer, you can see it see-through on the black values. So wherever uh, this shape intersects with the other shape, uh, because of the alpha inverted map, um, turn this off, you can see that shape just doesn't appear in those areas. So real cool. Um, I'm sure Photoshop people will uh, know exactly what's going on. So I mean you can change the colors of each shape too. Uh, you can change just by do effect generate fill, you know, change this guy, maybe you want a green in there. Ooh, <laughs> green and black value. I don't like that. But yeah, I mean just mess with it. You guys create something cool and uh, show me what you got. Yeah. Um, so I mean in our other composition we have I have all sorts of uh, types of color correction going on here. I've got a grunge layer going. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy this grunge layer over, paste it in here, scale it down, it's too big. Um, okay, and I guess I'll show you what um, I do for my grunge layers. I like to animate my grunge layers. And so, if you look into this composition here, you can see I've got uh, two uh, grunge layers on their own. This guy and this guy. And this grunge layer is set to a luma mat of this black solid which has fractal noise going on so what that means is wherever uh, the values wherever the fractal noise is real dark the grunge texture underneath is not going to render and wherever it's white uh, it will render so and I've animated the ev evolution of this guy with a time expression you know, there's the time times a value and so that means over time it changes, it evolves, the fractal does, and so that changes the grunge layer underneath. And when you put them together, it creates a dynamic grunge layer. Instead of just, you know, one that just sits there like this, you know, over everything, which is, I think that's real boring. I see other people use that a lot, but I don't like it at all. Um, okay. Um, I've got, you know, Magic Bullet Mojo, Looks, and Misfire on here, but you guys don't need to do that. It's going to drastically increase your render time, as you can see. Uh, but, I mean, if you want to do it, go for it. Uh, I think it looks nice. 
Yeah, so you can see our grunge there. It might be hard to see on the screen recording, though. Anyways, um, that's pretty much it. What else can I show you? All right, uh, I guess one other thing you can do is go to Layer, New, Solid, uh, change it to black, press OK, press T for the opacity, go to the beginning, click keyframe for opacity, uh, over time, set it to zero, and go to the end, put it zero, and then 100. All right, and what that does is it's just going to fade in your shapes at the beginning and then fade out nice at the end. So you don't have to do that in an editing program like Premiere. And so that's it. I mean, you guys can add uh, all sorts of other shape layers here. You can add, uh, I mean, your own hand-drawn animations, uh, you know, masked, masked layers, all sorts of stuff you can do. Um, it's just real nice to be able to create an animation like this. I mean, we have four keyframes, and the, <laughs> the only reason why we have those keyframes is to fade it in and fade it out at the end, so it's real nice. I mean, you can create a layer, new, null object, can select all these guys, parent them to the null, and then at the beginning, or I guess up to here, we'll click null scale, go to the end, press this button, create another keyframe, and then at the very beginning we'll set the scale equal to zero, and at the very end we'll set the scale equal to zero as well. And so what that'll do is it'll scale in the null and along with the null, all these shapes are coming with it. There you go. And then at the end, it just kind of scales out again, shrinks. Okay, um, I mean, the very last thing we can do is add some motion blur, which I think actually makes uh, these animations quite a bit better. Uh, so if you don't have motion blur yet, you can click on switches slash modes, and now you should be able to see this guy, this column here. And just turn on motion blur for all the layers. I mean, you don't need it for the background. You probably don't need it for the null and stuff like that, but it really, there is no motion blur, so it doesn't make the render any slower. Uh, go ahead and click on this switch to enable the motion blur for all layers. If you don't do that, you will not get motion blur, even though you have those uh, layers checked. Um, and so now you can see as, I mean, the points are animating and it's just creating dynamic blur, which is really cool. There you go. And you've got a pretty nice animation going here. So I guess I'm going to leave you guys with that. Um, if you make something cool out of this, just go ahead and uh, post it in the comments below and show me what you did. Yeah, so I guess that's it. Thanks, guys.